Welcome to Part 7 of U.S. History Online. Today we will examine Standard 7.9 and how the Civil Rights Movement expanded to influence other social movements in the United States, focusing today on the fight for Native American civil rights. In the late 1960s and 1970s, activists began to focus on issues of significance to the subgroups to which they belong, based on culture, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, and religion. These groups were heavily influenced by the larger civil rights movement. Like the civil rights movement, they were often met with hostility from individuals, local officials, and the U.S. government. It was in this environment that Native American activists began demanding civil rights. By the late 1960s, many Native Americans were seeking to maintain their culture or retrieve cultural elements they felt had been lost through the United States federal policy of termination. In 1943, the United States Senate conducted a survey of Native American conditions. The living conditions on the reservations were found to be horrific, with the residents living in severe poverty. The Bureau of Indian Affairs, a government agency, and the federal government as a whole were found to be at fault for the troubling problems due to extreme mismanagement. Thus began the era of the government's efforts to eradicate the Indian tribes of North America as cultural and political entities. The U.S. government called this their termination policy. Termination policy was shaped by a series of laws with the intent of assimilating Native Americans into mainstream American society. Attempts to assimilate Native Americans was not new. The belief that indigenous people should abandon their traditional lives and become Americanized had been the basis of policy for many decades. To that end, Congress set about ending the special relationship between tribes and the federal government. From 1953 to 1964, 109 tribes lost official tribal status. Federal responsibility and jurisdiction of their people were turned over to state governments. Approximately two and a half million acres of native land was removed from protected status, and about 12,000 Native Americans legally lost their official tribal affiliation. Native Americans were encouraged to relocate to American cities. From the government's perspective, the intention of termination policy was to grant Native Americans all the rights and privileges of citizenship, reduce their dependence on the federal government, and eliminate the government's expense of providing services for Native peoples. They were to become tax-paying citizens, subject to state and federal taxes as well as laws, from which they had previously been exempt. From the Native American standpoint, termination policy collided with their own desires to preserve Native identity, and was viewed as yet another in a long list of injustices committed by the United States government against Native peoples. In 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Indian Civil Rights Act, which granted Native Americans, for the first time, full access to the United States Bill of Rights. The act was a highly controversial law because it authorized federal courts to intervene in intertribal disputes, a power they never had before. Later that year, a group of Native American activists, including Dennis Banks, George Mitchell, and Clyde Bellacourt, convened a gathering of 200 people in Minneapolis and formed the American Indian Movement, or AIM. The organizers of AIM were frustrated by decades of poverty, discrimination, and termination policy. The Native American suicide rate was twice that of the general population, and the infant mortality rate was the highest in the country. Half of all Native Americans lived on reservations where unemployment reached 50%. 20% of Native Americans nationwide lived below the poverty line. On November 20th, 1969, a small group of AIM activists landed on Alcatraz Island, the former site of a notorious federal prison in San Francisco Bay. They claimed rights to it under a treaty provision granting them unused federal land. They announced plans to build an American Indian cultural center including a history museum, an ecology center, and a spiritual sanctuary. People on the mainland provided supplies by boat, and celebrities visited Alcatraz to publicize the cause. More people joined the occupiers until at one point they numbered about 400 people on the island. 
From the beginning, the federal government negotiated with them to persuade them to leave. They were reluctant to give in, but over time, the occupiers began to drift away of their own accord. Federal marshals removed the final holdouts on June 11, 1971, 19 months after the occupation began. The next major demonstration came in 1972, when AIM members and others marched on Washington, D.C., a journey they called the Trail of Broken Treaties, and occupied the offices of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Their demands included improved housing, education, and economic opportunities in Native American communities, the drafting of new treaties, the return of Native American lands, and protections for Native religions and culture. The standoff ended with a negotiation and promised to hold more talks. The most dramatic event staged by AIM was the occupation of the Native American community of Wounded Knee, South Dakota, in February 1973. Located on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, Wounded Knee had historical significance. It was the site of an 1890 massacre of members of the Lakota tribe by the U.S. Army. The federal government surrounded the area with U.S. Marshals, FBI agents, and other law enforcement forces. A tense standoff ensued that lasted 71 days. There was frequent gunfire from both sides. Two Native Americans were killed and a U.S. Marshal, as well as an FBI agent, were wounded. The government did very little to meet the protesters' demands. Two AIM leaders, Dennis Banks and Russell Means, were arrested, but charges were later dismissed. President Richard Nixon's administration halted the federal policy of termination. Millions of acres of land were restored to tribes, and funding was increased for Native American education, health care, legal services, housing, and economic development. AIM formally disbanded in 1981. Despite the end of termination policy, Native American people still face extremely high rates of unemployment and poverty, a lack of housing, and lower life expectancy than other Americans.